Hello everybody and welcome to episode 9, uh, Game Week 14 review with the Dream Team Tonic. Uh, hope you had a good Christmas. This will be the last one of the year with me as usual today, Ben. How you doing everyone? Merry Christmas. You alright pal? Yeah, good. How are you? you a, yeah, all good mate. You have a good Christmas? Yeah, good one. Quiet. That's Little one was happy be. though. <laughs> That's it. That's it with kids in it. All about the kids. Aye. Uh, straight into some talking points, Ben. Yeah. Um, obviously, we've had all these COVID issues. What, what you were making of all these games being cancelled with Spurs game off tonight and City game off at the weekend, well, earlier in the week? Well, I don't know what to make of it, really. It's just, just got to get on with it, haven't we? It's throwing a big spanner in works, though, isn't it? Yeah, big time. Could have done with them uh, points tonight, Tottenham points and the uh, City points of the day. Yeah, that's it. Um, you got a team that's predominant, predominantly City, or like you've got Kane and Son doubled up in attack. Probably been a little bit light this week. Definitely, yeah. Uh, no, the the City defense did all right because they got the clean sheet. So if you had bolts on them, it yeah, wasn't too bad. But. Um, I think there were a few positive cases at Sheffield United as well, weren't they, before the Burnley game? Yeah, seen something about that. So yeah. It seems to be uh, spreading quite fast through the uh, football world. So I don't think City and Spurs will be the first casualties. I know, obviously, Liverpool had it a little bit earlier in the season, didn't they? Yeah. Um, so you probably you want to start ticking off these big sides and think, right, who's next? Is United next? Chelsea next? And maybe jumping away from their players. But it is being a, a proper nuisance. Um I don't do you think they're gonna uh, call a halt to it or do you think they're happy with the uh the way they're testing? Well, they announced uh, tonight that they're gonna carry on, didn't they? Um I, I don't think they'll stop. I think they'll carry on. They've got they've just... got they've got all the money, haven't they, to keep the testing going and you know Keep the matches going. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Well, let's have a quick jump onto the Chelsea assets and what's going on down there. They're obviously <laughs> having a bit of a sticky period. Yeah, we've talked a lot about uh, Werner. Um, I, obviously, I kept him. I didn't have any subs, so I had to keep him anyway. But um, just looking there, he's had ten points since game week ten. Um, and then you compare him to the other two forwards at Chelsea with Abraham and Giroud, who've both had 28 points apiece since game week 10. He's obviously, he's slacking. Yeah, and he's obviously, um, he, he's played a lot more minutes than what they've had um, over that period as well. And obviously more expensive. What would you, I mean, you'd probably definitely be getting rid of him now, would you? Oh, yeah, <laughs> if definitely. You've, if you've come this far, do you stick with him? Well, you, obviously you, you've, as soon as you've got the transfers, I, I'm definitely. I, if I had him in my team, I'd definitely get rid of him. Yeah. Yeah. Important spot up there into them um, forward positions. Yeah. There's just better options now. Um, yeah. I don't know. Just, um, he doesn't seem to be uh, playing well at the moment. He got pulled off at half time the other, other game. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. And then he was benched for the game after, weren't he? Yeah, he was, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, you want players that are going to be playing every game. Even like, because yeah. there's no European games, you could just start looking outside the box. Start looking at your your uh, Leeds players. Yeah. Or, you know, Aston Villa, Wolves. Yeah, Bamford. Bamford's impressed me this season. Yeah, Bamford's the man in it at the moment. You know, my differential pick this week. Yeah, he's smashed it, right 13 points out of two games. Yeah, yeah did all right. On penalties now as well. That, that's it, yeah. Until he misses. Yeah. I've seen in his little interview. So, <laughs> he, well, he yeah. hit that one well, didn't he? Yeah. Good penalty. But like, unlike what, uh, unlike Itchy what? Knackers, who took a penalty for Leicester. <laughs> I didn't see the penalty. I said I he missed a penalty. Oh, terrible. Before he sat on bench, yeah. shaking his head probably. Well, it, um, 
There was an interview going around about f- four months ago. Leicester players, I think it was Christian Fuchs and Ndidi, and they said to him, who's the best penalty taker at Leicester? And they all going, Ian Acho, Ian Acho. Like that. So <laughs> soon as soon as he missed that penalty, I went on Twitter and looked for it and I just retweeted it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what's he was like point? doing one of those stupid, you know what, like run up to the spot and stop and then yeah. try and put it and the keeper just read it straight away. I think you got to do that. you got to bury it. Yeah. Like Bamford just smashed it in the corner. We couldn't say that. Yeah. I think it go back to like Shearer days. Just yeah. Really him. Just go run up to it and lever it. Yeah. But yeah. Goals with the days. Proper penalties. Proper penalties. I mean, look, look amongst all the teams like uh, Chelsea, City, Liverpool, there's no real, real consistency amongst them. No. You know, Liverpool just drew again tonight. So back to back draws for Liverpool against West Brom and Newcastle. Yeah. You'd, you know, you expected them to rack up the points in them two games. Definitely. Um, top of the form table, and it it shocked me when I seen it. The last five games, Everton are top of the form table. Yeah, four wins and one draw. Yeah, mm. I mean, it's, it's some good going. They snuck back up there, and then if you go a bit further back and over the last ten games, the form team is actually United. Mm. Uh, they're uh, they're all going mad on Twitter tonight. Are we back in the title race? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I've seen a picture of Steve Bruce in the United shirt like that. You know, like, <laughs> there's, that's that's for you, lads. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's 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 a strange season, strange season, up and down. It's very hard to read at the minute. It's very unpredictable. Yeah? It's more unpredictable in the season than uh, Leicester won the league. <laughs> yeah, it is. You would so never, you know you would never have going. said that Liverpool would would draw against uh, Newcastle and West Brom before the games. No, the price on that has been unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um. Yeah, you can't really have any trust in anybody. In City, so City defensively, they've only conceded one in five games. So I know, I think a few weeks ago, weren't it, when we said, we probably said at the right time to jump onto the City defence, didn't we? Yeah. We probably banged on to, with that time. Um, They were cheap. They were, they were, the percentage of ownership were really low. So we, we got that right. But now yeah. with this COVID issue around City, because you don't know how many players in the next few days are going to start testing, and as you, I don't know whether it was, I think it was Alan St. Maximum at Newcastle when they had a little bit of an outbreak. Mm. He's still not back in their side yet. Yeah, there's a lot of people that suffer with it a little bit longer than just having a bit of a cold, um, and they suffer with a bit of fatigue. So, so if Carl Walker says has got it. He might test negative within the next few days and then he's allowed to go back to training. But is he going to be the same player? Is he going to be fit enough? Yeah. There's question marks all over it. Mm. Um, so so it's kind of like you were saying to avoid City, weren't you? I, I don't know. I wouldn't avoid them. They're probably no. first on my pick list for next yeah. month, definitely. Yeah, but then are you going to be so? Would someone like Carl Walker, who has, who you know, is tested positive, would you be tempted to put him in? Not straight away, no. I'd look at, um, well, my favourite player from them is Cancelo at the moment. Yeah, I'd be looking for him because he, even if Walker don't play, he'll play right back for Can- uh, Cancelo. Play right back for Walker, and uh, yeah. if Walker plays, then he'll play left back. So he's like yeah. uh, Pep's one of Pep's yeah. favourite defenders at the moment. Yeah, he must be nailed completely now to show with uh, Walker being out. Yeah, definitely. He's a, he's a good show. I mean, you just got to hope that they contained it and it doesn't rip through. I know Liverpool, they only had a few cases, didn't they? About three cases. So you'd like to think that it is just held to that. And what about Villa's defence? One goal in five games as well, matching yeah. the City. Smashing it at the moment. Martinez yeah. playing well, isn't he, in goal? Top drawer, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he was brilliant for Arsenal at the back end of that season. So yeah. why they sold him was a crazy decision. Leno was the big buy, weren't he, though, weren't he? Uh, Martin- Martinez was like the reserve keeper. You know what I mean? Sometimes so you just got to admit that, actually, you might have it wrong. Yeah. Why not? So, yeah, Villa's defensive assets, obviously, going forward, 
whether they can replicate that, mm. we don't know. But he's looked really solid. He's looked a really, a really good option. Um, so we touched upon it just a little bit earlier. United, obviously, being the forum side over the last ten games. What about their assets? And obviously, they're still probably relatively uh, less owned than the other other teams. The likes of, I know Rashford's been climbing over the last few weeks. Yeah. Then you you got the options of Cavani, Martial, Greenwood, even. Um, got some decent options Maguire, there. Maguire is a, a dream team darling as well. Yeah, they love him, don't they? They love He's him. Seven got ratings. star man in the last match as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he just picks up them reins, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he's a decent option. They seem to be rotating the left-backs at the moment, United. Yeah, with Tellers started the last yeah. game and Shaw come on. Um, Wan-Bissaka. Lindelof, Lindelof's injured at the minute, isn't he? Yeah, I know he's out injured. I didn't see, see what it was. Whether yeah. long-term. But Baye come in, didn't he? Yeah, Baye's come in. He always looks very good by it. He's a little bit erratic, but he looks good. Um, but then he just he just always disappears with an injury. Mm. They spent big money on him, and he's just never quite cemented a place there, has he? No. They're all uh, under... Um, United players are all under uh, 10% ownership defense defenders, like. Yeah. I think that I... Obviously, for a bit of a differential, maybe you try and make up some ground. Jumping onto a couple of them might be might be worth it because they are looking a, a bit better. But as you know, as you know, probably like four weeks previous, United fans wanted Ollie out, and do you know what I mean? They're looking at mid table, mid table finish. Now they're going to win league. <laughs> but yeah, it's same. We are. I've seen it with Arsenal fans as well. They are now probably going to put in a challenge for the top four and. Yeah, you see, it's a very fickle game. Football changes, well, done it over. They've over they've a got of weeks. really nice fixtures. Arsenal next four games. They've yeah, they picked West up some Brom. very good results, haven't they? Mm. Go on, what, what's the next fixtures? They've got West Brom away, Newcastle at home in the FA Cup, Palace away. Uh, sorry, Palace at home, and then Newcastle at home in the league, and then they have a tricky. And then it's the FA Cup fourth round, and then. Um, it's Southampton away Tuesday, twenty sixth, and then Man United at home on the thirtieth of on the thirtieth of January Saturday. Yeah. So it starts off pretty good. So if you like... if you've got the minerals to to pick pick a Arsenal back for. <laughs> well, that's it. That's it. If you're someone like me, you probably need to make up a bit of ground. Um, the options there, in it, it would be a ballsy move to a. Uh, in two or three of them. Yeah, definitely. It, it can work, can it? Yeah. It can work. It can get you back in the mix. Well, right. Anyway, right, let's go on to a question for me on Twitter, following on to that. Which Arsenal assets, if any, are worth jumping on? So it leads perfectly on to that. Uh, obviously, we just spoke about the defence, Ben. What about going forward? Well... <laughs> The main, the person that comes straight in your head. We've been, we've been slagging him off for the last few weeks. <laughs> it's Obama Yang. Yeah, it's got the the, the fixtures. It's just ridiculous. They should score at least two or three a game in them if they're yeah. gonna go for it. Um, Lacazette's on form at the moment. Three goals in three games. Yep. Uh, it just doesn't get the game time, though, does it? Mm. Mm, I know what you mean. He scores and then the next game he's benched. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's always been the same with Lacazette at Arsenal, I think. He's never. He's another one. He's never nailed a position there. Yeah. You, c- you can't drop him at the moment, though, if he's scoring the goals. You'd like to think so. But mm. Obviously, Martinelli's coming, hasn't he? Back, back yeah. Fit. And I, he looked a player the other year. Um, and he looked good the other night. And he, he got trod on, didn't he, on his foot. Mm. He was looking good. Obviously, he is still fit. That was just an impact injury. So he's an option, but then he's a striker. And trying to squeeze... Would you put Martinelli into one of them three positions? 
Probably not, no, definitely not. <laughs> no, not yet, yeah, not mean, until he starts showing the form he was had of last season. Um, yeah, you, the Saka, isn't he? Yeah, Saka, he just took a knock. But we'll see We'll see how he gets over that. Got taken off, didn't he, in the last game? But he, he's got 23 points in two games, last two games. So yeah. he's, he's a good cheapo. Yeah, because there is there is a gap in that midfield, isn't there, for uh, yeah, for uh, a player like him. Yeah, big time. So I, I used to have Harvey Barnes in that position, and uh, <laughs> I think I think I took him out at the wrong time. Yeah, so just unlucky in it. Yeah, um, uh, he did get dropped two or three games running, and that was just frustration. Take him out. Next thing you know, he's scoring two or three, yeah. two or three goals up bounds. He's a bit like Foden, isn't he? Just yeah, he doesn't play every game, but when he plays, he scores. <laughs> yeah, so it's something you have to keep keep safe with over a number of months, I think, isn't it? Yeah. I was looking you... at go on. No, go on, you're all right. Eh? I was looking at the Arsenal defenders as well, obviously because of clean sheet potential. Yeah. Um, but Tierney, right? He, on paper, you'd say he's the best defender that they've got. Yeah, mm. he's he's got attacking output uh, potential, yeah. and he's obviously a defender. Um, but he hasn't got a seven rating since the first game of the season in Dream Team. Wow. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so it's something he doesn't do right. Well, I don't know what he, he's up and down the field, and he's doing tackles, crosses. I don't, I don't see what what he's doing anything wrong, but. You see, like play, players like Holding, he's um, yeah. like double the points uh, that Tierney's on. He's getting seven ratings when he plays. You, you got to think that who who scored must be if a pass is completed because obviously they like to yeah play around with it at the back and Holding and Gabriel are probably getting quite a lot of pass completions. Mm. Maybe that is what's edging them the ratings rather than obviously Tierney, like you say, bowing up and down that wing. Uh, putting yeah. in some tackles, probably not putting in as many passes um, or incomplete passes, I would guess, if he's crossing the ball from out wide and doing that kind of thing. Maybe that's mm. working against him. Yeah, I, well, I was looking at him, I was thinking, I'll, I'll try and see if, how much he would be. And then I looked at his stats and it just put me off him. Because yeah. Bellerin's on double the double the points. Uh, Bellerin's on 42, he's on 25. So it's just like, yeah. what's the, what? What are they doing different? Uh, Bellerin's got a couple of assists. I think he's got four assists. That's probably what shot him off. Yeah, he's attacking returns. Mm. But holding the season, holding's on forty-one points, and he's had a few seven ratings in clean sheets. Yeah. So I don't know, but yeah, the definitely yeah. Uh, options Arsenal now with that run of fixtures, at least for are options. They're ballsy options, but if. Like if you, if you do need to make make yeah. some strides or take a gamble, it is like you say with the fixtures, it is worth a gamble. Yeah. Shoot, I mean, is Aubameyang going to go this season without hitting double figures in goals? I would, I would say so. I would say he's, no. he's gonna he's gonna like go off soon, isn't he? You you'd think so, you think so, and like you say with the run of fixtures, maybe it's this month or well next month, start starting next year. Yeah. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see how that goes with the Arsenal. Um, right, go on. A team review. Uh, a man's team. Uh, he's asked for a review. He's sat on a thousand and forty-eight points. I would guess he's probably at top of top of his uh, mini leagues. Uh, yeah. Solid looking team. Uh, what what would you do with that team, Ben? He's about top thousand, isn't he? Top one k. Yeah. Well. It's a decent team. Salah, Kane, Rashford, probably the best strikers this month, uh, last month, December. Yeah. He's uh, Kevin De Bruyne, Bruno Fernandes, Mares, Grealish. It's pretty decent midfield. Grealish has uh, quite a few weeks, hasn't it? Yeah. Mares is uh, not played this this week, but he probably played. Next week in and score an assist. There's no yeah. like standout midfielders this year, so no. If he's doing well at the moment, I probably wouldn't go too much different from what he's got. Uh, no, 
He's got two City defenders in there, which is good. Uh, Cancelo and Diaz. Yeah, nailed both of them then. Yeah. And then he's got Mendy and Wan-Bissaka. Which... Yeah, you'd think Chelsea will pick up soon, won't they? Yeah. Um, Wan-Bissaka. Well, we just spoke about United defenders. Yeah, it's yeah. a team, that. Yeah, it's it's not one where you want to review and say. Unless you... yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't touch out, mate. Yeah, but he is it, it, it's solid. If there's one thing I would change, and it's I wouldn't actually I wouldn't do it probably straight away. It was just it would be an idea. Just going off Mares's form, mm. he's scored eleven points since game week ten. Since he scored the hat trick, um, I think he scored the hat trick in game week ten. Since then, he's had eleven points, mm. but then. Someone I've been banging on about for a couple of weeks is Mason Mount, who's forever looking dangerous at Chelsea. Seems to be nailed in his position and he's on free kicks and uh, corners. Uh, he's had 18 points um, since game week 10. Yeah. So he's had a few more, seven more than Mares, but he is more or less a guaranteed start at Chelsea. Mm. But, I mean, yeah, go, go on. on. Go on, what you say? I, I was going to say as well, uh, Mares is mate. Pep's darling Torres, yeah, because uh, obviously he's not in his side there, so he wanted to switch across and still keep the city asset. Torres has had 16 points since game week 10, which isn't great either, but he does seem to be starting more than Mares. Whether that's just how I'm perceiving it, it, m- it might be different, but um, yeah, Mares 11 points since then. It's not he, he's shown that flash of brilliance and scored the hat trick. I mean, we, he does this a lot, yeah. And then he's gone quiet again. But yeah, I wouldn't recommend taking him out because, as Ben says, he'll probably then go and score a brace in the next game. Yeah, it's the, it's the ceiling. He's got a high ceiling, hasn't he? Like, he can just go and score two goals, get an assist, or get three assists in one game. You know, he can just go off. Yeah, and but he, he's a greedy player, isn't he? Yeah. You watch him, he, he's he's a little bit like Salah in the, mm. in the sense that when he gets in that area and starts cutting inside, he just wants to shoot. He's not bothered about who's across from him. He, he wants to shoot. So, like you say, his ceiling's high because of that. Um, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't touch that team. I'd just sit there pretty. Yeah, well, everyone you, else try and catch you. Yeah, use your transfers for injuries. Or yeah. if you spot something, a bit of form, jump on somebody then. But I wouldn't really change it much yet. I mean, like you say about the fixtures with Arsenal... I mean, Grealish has gone a little bit quiet. Could mm. it be worth jumping on Saka in that position? Maybe it's a bit of a differential. Mm. Bit of a risk. Could be with the fixtures. It is. But Green- yeah, like you say, COVID, COVID's knocking around in it, yeah. and then you have got your injuries as well. Just all fire. Yeah. If you if you're on that points total, there's no need to be doing much. Grealish is on thirty six percent owned as well. And if he has a good game, the next game, I know they've got a hard run of matches now, Villa, but yeah, I can see him still scoring high against the top top teams, getting man and match and stuff. Well, he's a top player. I don't think it matters the fixtures with him, does it? No, he's got the capability of getting a seven rating every game. Um, like you say, assists, even goals. Yeah, top player. We'll move on then. We've got another. Team review um, for Connor's it's Connor's team. Ben Techie Fried Chicken. <laughs> like, I like the name. Um, what do you think of this one, Ben? Yeah, it's pretty similar team. Yeah, to our man's um, same forward three: Kane, Salah, Rashford. Uh, the main three in midfield: Grealish, De Bruyne, Fernandez, and then Torres, your man. Yeah. Uh, he's got eight points this week. Um, and then he's got double uh, double Man City defence as well. And then he's got Matip, which is looking like a big injury, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's looking like a bit more serious than first thought. Um, and then Casper in goal. Uh, decent team again. 996 points. Seems around the top 1K, isn't he? Yeah, doing well. Yeah. See, I, I'd be tempted to even go full free uh, Man City defenders at the back there. 
I notice she hasn't got our man uh, Cancelo. Well, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. But then money wise, he's got 0.5 in the bank. Matic's all right, yeah. 3.3. So it does put Cancelo out of reach. Yeah, Walk Walker's um, obviously out of, out of bounds at the moment. Isn't he? So yeah, you could take him out. You See? could take Walker, Matip, switch to Cancelo, and then another an Arsenal defender. <laughs> yeah, maybe like the yeah. nice and cheap West Brom away Saturday. Yeah, There's some quick points there. You think? Struggling yeah. West Brom. Really are struggling. Schmeichel's, yeah, I think it, obviously yeah, Schmeichel. Schmeichel's got less uh has got Newcastle on Sunday. Uh, yeah, I'd leave Schmeichel in. Yeah. Decent choice. Both good teams. Yeah, they are. They are. Is that the uh the new template up front that Kane Salah Rashford? It's looking like it. I jumped on it at the start of the month and I got rid of Werner. I got Rashford in just for the fixtures, yeah. and uh, it's worked out all right for me. I'm doing all right. Yeah, it's a good, good choice that there. Good choice. Just trying to find a, a, another midfielder now. Someone who can jump out at us. It's just seemed to be like the same players that just do bits and bobs in it. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Just trying to find find them ones that are just. Uh, at the right time. If Harvey Barnes carries on the way he's going, he, he could be a, a good pick. But Rogers keeps dropping him, so Yeah. It's tricky. That's it now. Has he had his flurry? Mm. It's the same as when obviously you get your Mares who scored his hat trick and then you stick him in and he's not done anything since for the last four or five game weeks. So as as a uh, Harvey Barnes had his little flurry of uh, goal activity, you stick him in now and then his blanks start to rack up. It's risky. It's risky. Um, yeah, back back to his team. Just if he obviously wanted to leave Walker in, and just see how that plays out. Because, like I say, Walker might be back training next week. Yeah. So it, it's it's not one of. I think we've seen it earlier with Salah, didn't we? Where we were expecting, well, we all have to self isolate for 10, 10 to fourteen days. So aren't they doing the same? But it's not like that, is it? Because they're testing every day. Yeah. So you might well see Walker play with it next week. So I, I'd be tempted just to go. You've got Matip, obviously, and then plus is 0.5. Stones is there at 3.8. Yeah. It's an option. You get to him then, can he? Yeah, you can get to Stones. There's also Maguire, who we spoke about earlier. Uh, he's at 3.8. So there's two options there. There's um as well Eric Dyer at Tottenham. Um good fixtures for Tottenham. And he's like yeah. nailed on in the team. The only thing is he doesn't seem to get the uh seven ratings. But Tottenham no. go on a, a good run of clean sheets there. Yeah, you can see that, can't you? If you need an enabler like and then you can move some money somewhere else. But definitely Stones at the moment, nine clean sheets in a row I've seen. He's uh yeah, every time he plays, that, even if he, so if he doesn't if he misses one game, he'll come back in anyway and get another clean sheet. <laughs> That's it, he's guaranteed, isn't it, with him now? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I would definitely be looking at him, Stones. It's gone from one of Dodgers defenders in league to throw it more solid. I know. It's mad. Crazy. Well he's been eating over 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 at summer break. Right, onwards, we'll uh, go to the Differential League update because this is where I am actually doing all right. Smashed it this week. <laughs> yeah, my choice this week was uh, Bamford, <coughs> 13 points. Uh, Martial for you, Ben. Mm. Did he not sit on bench off game, did he? Um, he um, had a goal chalked off against Leicester for offside. Yeah. That was the closest thing he did. <laughs> That's unlucky. Yeah. Well, I'm not, yeah. I'm not too fussed. <laughs> yeah, not too bad. <coughs> Obviously, you don't want him to score against you. Um, the community, they chose Firmino, and he got him three points tonight against Newcastle in a nil-nil draw. So the updated table is me sat there at the top on 47, Ben in second on 32, and the community trailing 
on 17 points. Really are struggling. I might have to give them first pick again this week. <laughs> you, you, had first fed, pick. you had Fed's pick, didn't you? You had Fed's yeah, last pick, yeah. You still picked the best one. Yeah. <laughs> it seems to be working all right. Like that. Right, let's go to the uh, Dream Team Tonic, uh, the league. Let's uh, give a, the top 10 a read out. Uh, yeah, in 10th, we've got Dodgy Sisters Athletic, James Fricker. Uh, ninth, we've got Dream Team Professor Scott Harris. In eighth, we've got Marty, Martin Townsend. In seventh, Holdor FC, Peter Brown. In fifth, Rilston FC, Callum Hudson. Joint fifth with Callum is uh, Ben's DT Tonic 11. Whee! There you are, <laughs> creeping up there, right? Creeping up. Uh, in fourth, we've got Trent Enders, Michael Byron. Uh, third, the villains, Wayne Herbert. Second, Fergie Time, Andy Ferguson, and the Smoking Guns still sat at the top with Eaton Lee Abbott. Uh, 29 point cushion up there. Uh, yeah, no one's caught him yet. And the team of the week for the game week 14th is uh, Trent Enders, Mick Byron with 102 points, which is a monster score. Yeah, well done. Yeah, well done, Mick. Great score, that. If you want to know, if anyone's interested about further down at the table, um, we've got Tony's DT Tonic 11 sat down there uh, in 16th place 57 points this week for me um, <clears throat> but yeah yeah, I, did, I didn't do too bad considering uh, your team Ben 52 points this week yeah 52 but it's been a bit of a mess on it we obviously all the, uh, the postponements with the City and the, the Spurs game um, yeah but I suppose it's going to, I think it's going to become more common in it with all these cancellations. Mm. How did your uh, team get on last week? Because we didn't cover that. Oh, last week I ended up on 91 points. Um, Firmino did bits for me again. I got 105, mate. 105? Yeah. Yeah, it, it, a decent week all round, I think, for a lot of people, weren't it? Yeah, uh, everyone was decent. Yeah, obviously I had uh, Mount and Werner, and then obviously James had a did not play. Going forward, obviously, sub, uh, transfers are back, aren't they? Mm-hmm. It should be back this Friday, New Year's Day. Mm-hmm, Friday, yeah. So, I mean, have you any plans of touching anything in your team? I've actually got a transfer left. <laughs> Have you? So yeah. You're using that before Friday then? Yeah, it will be. Um, I'm just thinking, I looked at my team and the one the one player that hasn't scored any points this week really is my keeper, um, Mendy. Yeah. So I'm just trying to think of value. I'm going to be jumping off of him. I'm going to be jumping yeah. on to either City or Liverpool. So, Allison or Edison? Yeah. Just to gain some value? Yeah, obviously, Mendy's, Mendy's price probably rocketed. What did he end up at? 3.3 at the moment, I think he is. But he went up, he went like 4, mil, what, 4 million at one point. Oof. Jesus. Edison sat there at 3.7 at the minute. Are you going to obviously do that before the price rises yeah. Friday? Um, yeah, Man City's got Carabao coming up, haven't they, as well? Yeah, it's a big big January, in it? FA Cup as well, isn't there? Yeah, FA Cup. FA Cup. There's only, only one um, leg in the semi-final this year as well. It's usually two legs. Or oh, in the EFL Cup? Yeah. They've scrapped, scrapped one of the legs for the COVID, I would imagine. Just right, to try yeah. and condense it all in. Yeah, it's probably a wise thing, isn't it? Well, I think we've covered everything there, Ben. Um, obviously, this will be the last episode of the year. Um, and then going on to going on to next year, hopefully things improve COVID-wise and and all that. Um, if you haven't if you haven't followed us yet or subscribed, uh, please do. Um, 
um, visited the website. The website will be below in the description. Uh, both our Twitter handles will be down there and our Facebook page. Um, yeah, please give us a like. Hope you enjoyed. Um, I hope you have a great new year. Um, we will speak to you again in the new year. Cheerio. Cheerio, everyone. Happy New Year. Have a good one. Yeah, yeah.